Everybody loves K-pop and don't deny it. It's just so catchy and sticks in your brain. And this isn't any different with the new viral hit of Rose and Bruno Mars, AP, AP, APT? Something like that. Of course, with a hit song, you also have a cool video clip. And this one is full with fun effects, just like this dancing hat. And that is exactly what we are creating today. By the way, if you want to follow along while we recreate this, you can just download the project file. Go to our Patreon channel and find this and many more projects of ours. And while doing that, you can also support us to keep on creating these videos. And hey, you get a bunch of extras with it. Link in the description below. So first things first, I need footage of my hat doing this bobbing motion. It's actually a super easy shot, but to make the post-production even easier, I use this cardboard plate underneath my head, outlining my head more. And the plus side, it also hides my double chin. Win -win. Now I also used a higher shutter speed to reduce the motion blur of my head. Again, a trick to make the post-production easier. Now let's jump into After Effects, and before anything, I will create a new composition with this icon right here. I choose my personal settings like the aspect ratio, the frame rate, and the duration of the comp. And then we are ready to start and this we do by creating a solid layer which we will be using as a background layer like in the music video i make the background pink and of course give it the correct name then i hit ok and go to the effects and presets panel here i look for the cc vignette effect and add it to the background which is finished now back in the project panel i look for my footage and drag it into the timeline and the first thing i want to do is single out my head this i can easily do with the rotoscope tool in the toolbar on top i look for the icon with a person and a brush this is a rotoscope tool and I will select it. Then I go to the timeline and double click on my footage layer. After Effects will now open up the layer tab window and in this window I can let the rotoscope magic happen. With the green circle cursor I select my head as good as possible. If I accidentally select too much I can hold the alt key which will make my circle red and will let me deselect stuff. Once everything is selected I can now hit the space bar and let After Effects do its thing. Of course I want to keep an eye on the process and intervene when necessary. After Effects is of course not perfect. And once the entire clip is rotoscoped, do not forget to freeze the entire thing. Otherwise After Effects will keep on repeating the rotoscoping process, making your project super slow. And voila, we have a singled out head. However, I don't like the position movement of it. And that's why I want to stabilize the head clip. Before I can do that, I first want to pre-compose the clip by right clicking on it and choosing pre-compose. I do this because the rotoscope tool doesn't like to work together with other effects. It's more of a lone wolf. Now with the new pre-composed layer selected, I head over to the tracker panel on the right side. Now if you don't find this panel, just go to the windows menu on top and enable the tracker panel from here. Okay, I'm back in the tracker panel and here I want to go for the warp stabilize option. So I hit that button. After Effects immediately starts analyzing the clip, but while it's doing that, I want to adjust some settings so it knows how to stabilize my clip. For the result, I set it to no motion. The method will be changed to position and lastly, the framing I set to stabilize only. Now after the analyzing is done, I have a head that is bobbing but isn't changing position. Perfect. All right, so before we continue, I want to show you Storyblocks. They have a plugin for Premiere and After Effects. You can access all different types of 3D templates, text animations, animated backgrounds and so on. Now besides these presets, you can browse unlimited stock assets. Imagine you spend an entire day waiting for the golden hour just to realize you forgot your SD card at home. You can't drive back because otherwise the sun will be gone. Well, you should have used Storyblocks. Just type in golden hour and boom, endless results. Storyblocks' curated stock library has everything you need to create high quality video in one place. With over a million 4K and HD footage, templates, music, sound effects, images and more, you can download unlimited high quality assets for one predictable subscription cost. You can say goodbye to paperclip pricing. Enhance your social media videos by accessing exclusive Storyblocks label music tracks directly in TikTok, Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. Starblocks will keep you protected from copyright strikes so that you can focus on what actually matters. And that is creating. To get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, head over to storyblocks.com slash After Effects Basics. We're not finished with the dancing head just yet. We need to add some spice to it. Now the first thing is the white border around the head. For this I duplicate the head layer and on the bottom duplicate I will add the simple shoker effect. Then I will lower the shoke mat to around minus 100. This will expand the head creating a black border next to it. Now because I want a white border I of course use the fill effect on it and adjust the color to white. Next up I also want to make the outline a little bit more rough and for that I will be using 
the rough and edges effect. For these settings, you can tweak them until you have something you like. I just want to make it less smooth. And voila, we finished the head. Time for some lightning. And these I can easily create with the pen tool. Without any layers selected, I take the pen tool and start drawing a lightning bolt in the composition panel. It's as easy as that. Then I also add a rough and edges effect to it to give it an extra crunch. In the music video, the lightning icons rotate in sync with the head. But keyframing this by hand seems a little bit tedious. That's why I will be tracking the movement of the head and use that to power the lightning icons. So with the head layer selected, go to the tracker panel. In this panel, I enable the position, which is default and the rotation option. Then I place the two tracking points on the edge of the mouth and start the tracking. Now the tracking can be rough and doesn't need to be that precise. However, I still need to get the movements right. Once the tracking process is done, I will choose a target to add the tracking data to. For this, I want to use a null object. So before we can transfer the data, let's make a null object. Select it with the edit target option and hit apply. In the next pop-up window, you can also hit OK. And as you can see, my null object now has a bunch of keyframes for the position and rotation property. But because I only want the rotation property, I will delete the position keyframes. Now let's link the lightning icon with the null object. With the pick whip tool of the lightning layer and while holding the shift key, parent the two layers. And because I held the shift key while parenting, my lightning automatically jumped to the same position as the null object, meaning it rotates perfectly together. For my next step, I want more lightnings, but duplicating them and moving them around manually is not fun. So I will be pre-composing the lightning and null object layers. Then I will go inside that new pre-comp and here I can change the aspect ratio to 450 by 500 pixels, making it a lot smaller. Back in my original composition, I add the CC Reptile to the lightning pre-comp. I increase all the properties until I start seeing duplicates. And voila, it's as easy as that. Now, if you want more lightning bolts and closer together, you only need to adjust the aspect ratio of your lightning pre-comp. This determines the distance between every duplicate. And to finish the entire effect, I add a null object where I link everything to. This new null object, I give a simple scale animation, making it zoom in and out. This will eventually make everything scale. And lastly, I also add an adjustment layer on top of everything and added a noise effect to it, making it more retro. And voila, we're ready to start in a new K-pop viral music video. If you want to learn some more tips and tricks on how to use shapes, check out the video right here on my left. Thank you guys so much for watching.